Welcome to part 27. We're skipping ahead yet again, even further. Now Snake is dead. And we're at room number one again. Well, shit, how the fuck's the Metal Gear Solid franchise gonna... Con oh, right, they have, like, clones and shit. <laughs> uh... I'm sorry, I've been... I was watching the, uh, Ground Zero Let's Play going on. Uh, wow. What a shitty game. <laughs> It's shitty. It's shitty in that it's like a again thirty minute demo that's thirty dollars at launch. <laughs> that was like ten. Yeah. What was it? That was the uh, yeah, because that was the Metal Gear Solid Five pre game because they took out yeah. like a whole level. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why, but because Konami, because Konami need that sweet money, sweet cash. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I said I didn't know why, but I did know why. I, I I lied. I just wanted to look clueless. Why you gotta bring deceit into our pleasant pure let's play? I I I don't know. Um, maybe just to confuse you guys. I just was it all a lie? Uh, am am, am I even sitting here recording with you? <laughs> Is it this timeline or the other one that we actually finished this let's play? Hold on, I have a pen right here. Let me do some. Okay, that hurt. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a, I'm here right now. Okay, cool, cool. Yeah, yeah. Nope. Existential fear, dread <laughs> setting in. This is me. I'm here, baby. That, that's 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 MBM in its purest in its purest sense. That's when you know you're the real deal. Yeah. So previously in this section, um, after Ace left, Junpei just kind of spaced out for like twenty something minutes. I I think it got like a splitting headache. LOL. So funny in retrospect, I know. But now that we've gone through door number seven, and we've given Clover the Clover, uh, we get to talk to the pink-haired girl yet again. Basically, by picking... It was the room with going with Santa that we were able to find the bookmark, thus have the bookmark in her inventory, to give to Clover in the second room to cheer her up, and thus gives you this conversation like this honestly this choice of rooms is probably the most cohesive in terms of like the reason you got these events is clearly because you did a for b for c some of the other rooms it's just well you picked some rooms here's here you go here's what your characters are talking about this one is definitely uh very cohesive for clover's development this is it basically if this was a uh if this was in virtue's last reward obviously this these choices in room would give you the clover end Maybe even like a modified accent. It's a shame that she doesn't do much more in Virtue's Last Reward, though. Well, I say a shame, but it's not, not, nothing really of note. She's like the first character ending that you should probably reach because there really isn't much to her presence within Virtue's Last Reward. Besides the obvious, of course. Is it, I was going to say, is it so sad that literally the most interesting scene with her in Virtue's Last Reward literally just has to do with the other character in that scene? Like, it's more to do with him, and this is her big, like, reason for being in the game, and it's not even, like, her conclusion. Yeah, exactly. Now, <laughs> I thought it was funny that now they're just conspiring here in that who, who who killed snake who killed snake i mean clover no one likes high school drama especially when we're in life and death torture situations so i'm gonna have to ask you to stop being a chatty kathy and help us solve the puzzle now we, at least we are on the good timeline so that and so we know she's not going to completely flip out with the axe again. Basically, we could say whatever, and she won't snap. Yeah. She's good. Yeah. yeah, exactly. It's it's still a little unsettling. We're talking about, oh yeah, who who killed Snake? Not not be, not because we know that Snake is not dead, but it's just creepy in general. Yeah, this is definitely kind of one of those weird time travely conundrums of like people's personality can you really hold all the other timelines accountable for what clover did in one particularly dark for herself timeline is that fair like i, I don't have an answer to that, i'm just i'm just throwing these ideas out there just saying you, you could definitely analyze characters 
either way, really, just, you know, if someone did do something in a timeline, they did it. Like, that fact exists in the infinite possibilities, but you are also dealing with infinite possibilities. So, yeah, there's going to be timelines where she kills people. Do you really hold the timelines where she didn't accountable? God damn it, did I just write a Rick and Morty? episode oh. like like rick goes to to time court and oh god stop me <laughs> that sounds like one and i'm i'm afraid that it'll actually be made if it does just message me just just let me just put it gently that i got my ideas stolen but hopefully not hopefully all of my ideas are as bad as all the rest yeah just like these ideas here like, this is going really, really in-depth to try and figure out, like, poss- hey, Maybe it was a good idea we had that splitting headache. I mean, I'm getting one now. Yeah. At least she's being logical about these possibilities. Like, as you saw, just one of them is that Ace, Santa, Seven, and Lotus all conspired to kill Snake. Um, if that were true, as she says, it would probably be- it would be nigh impossible to be a little bit tight-lipped about that. It's not only that, it's also if you have that many people on your side, they can just... Why aren't they steamrolling yeah. the rest of you guys? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, once you have them... It's kind of like when you watch Survivor. It's like, once you have the majority on your side, fuck it. <laughs> yeah, except this isn't a reality show that's... I mean, I have no idea why it's still alive. Is it Survivor still going? I mean... Could... could I think it is in definitely in some other country. It's it's going on because I know like Big Brother's still going on and shit. I'm I'm just really glad we're past like the huge like boom of reality shows because when everything was it was bad. It was so bad. TV was so terrible, and now TV's getting good again. And it's I mean everything else is shitty, but hey, TV's getting good again. <laughs> The thing that people are watching less of. <laughs> yeah. Well, I d yeah. Yeah. God, God damn millennials and our destruction of all things nice. Actually, that one didn't even make sense. Mm. <laughs> you might want to reword re -roar that a little bit before you turn into how do you do, fellow kids. How do you do, fellow... You can see, I can see like Ace not even needing terms like that. He's just naturally pleasant with children. They they all look the same to him, anyways. He he can't tell if it's a child or a small adult. This man did terrible things, but <laughs> he's got charisma. And continuing on with the puzzle again, um, I think we did kind of talk our thoughts a little bit the first time we went through, but it's been a while, so let's kind of give it a little refresher, I guess. Um, considering for the here, there are only two rooms, and the majority of the puzzles is kind of memorization, I'm not a big fan of it. Same. Same. I mean, can't even remember really much about this puzzle. I know that you had the, uh, the speed gauge, or whatever those are called on boats, but yeah, I mean, not a big fan of this room other than the fact that it's right before some good endings, so it's kind of a speed bump level, really. Yeah, it's interesting there are two wheels in here. I can kind of imagine why, but I mean... There's only one captain on the Titanic, so... And he, he went down... No, he didn't go down with the ship. Ooh. Oh, I read that. He's a fucking coward. He really did it. The, the fucking nerve. God, it's... Like I said, it's literally the event that keeps on giving. It's the ultimate clusterfuck of, of an incident. And yes, people died on it too, but just... The, holy shit... <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm just flabbergasted. I, I think I might start getting obsessed with the Titanic here, because clearly we don't know shit about it. No, we don't. It really is still a mystery, even after a hundred years later. Like, everything we know about it, there's countless books, countless 
films that aren't really, well, I guess, accurate. <laughs> but um, still, they're they're representative of some things that happen on there, and just countless representations of such. We still have yet to really understand so much that happened during that night. If nothing else, to get to the root cause of why the fuck does Leonardo DiCaprio still have an acting career? He's all right. I mean, he's Academy Award winning and everything. <laughs> Finally, for one though, just just the one. Do you think that was part of like the Mummy curse? Like by acting in <laughs> Titanic, they invoked the Mummy's curse, and he was doomed to essentially an age of acting perjury or purgatory. Until he was finally freed by sleeping with what was it a bear in that movie? I didn't watch it. I, I think he did. He killed the bear. He either killed the bear or slept with it. I forgot. I think he had a son in there too. Yeah, I I'm not sure. <laughs> Again, this is uh, another weird mechanism. This watch here fits in this watch-shaped lock, and somehow that indicates whether or not the lock is going to be open, depending on what time is on said watch. I'm gonna. I'm gonna need you to remember that because I'm starting to get a thought here that imagine all the tech doors, all all the doors in this death game. I need you to remember those. And how much it would realistically cost to make something so fucking useless aside from a very narrow context. Like, no, seriously, a pressure sensitive lock in the shape of a watch. Now all the other doors the vast wealth needed spent on these locks in the pursuit of what? Testing children? I don't know. And there was a little example of skipping through the text. Um, it's pretty fast. Not as fast as Virgil's last award. But uh, it's, it, it'll get you through. Say nothing's as fast as Virtue's last reward. Oh, no, I said you can go through the space-time continuum in that game. Yeah, but then... At what cost? Man, that, that, that game's gonna... It's so fucking confusing at the end. How are we gonna talk over that? I have no idea. I still don't think I fully quite understand who the fuck K is. Like... I, I, I have a grasp, like, I understand, but I don't think I fully, truly understand who K and, like, that other personality were. Like, I have... That's beyond my grasp. Also, dead guy. I, like... <laughs> th this should be noted, because, you know, aside from certain timelines like this is a pretty uh deaths are really not too permanent but there are a few that are and this is one of them so take note of it this is actually an important death in the game <laughs> in a game where every ending ends with everyone dying the, the random captain dude is one of the most important deaths in the game yeah, did, did his eyes roll back, or did they just become very pale? Because I, that's something that's very prevalent in a lot of um, showcasing of dead bodies in, I guess, I guess both arts, but more com I guess I see it more common in Jap Japanese art than Western, or sorry, Eastern than Western, but um, I couldn't tell. Yeah, there's, there's different stylized ways to show people dead. Dead. I guess they didn't want to go full blown. I understand it's it's still anime 2D and stuff. To to be fair, it, it still looks better than like when they show the 3D models in like Virtue's Last Reward or stuff for the Ooh, dead yeah. bodies. And it's just that's just a T pose. You just put blood on a T pose and <laughs> threw them on the ground. Oh, so man. E either I, I either one works. I want everyone in T poses now for the entire <laughs> game. Zero asserts his dominance. Yeah, I definitely prefer the hand-drawn characters in this game over the, the 3D models in Virtus Let's War. Now, don't get me wrong, though. They look good. 
They, they're very defining, but uh, it's just a preference over expression of emotion and, I don't know, just the general look, because they, they kind of look a little stiff. Yeah, I mean, I'm not too sure, because, like, no, I know that most people um, would agree that the models in the third game, like, not... They weren't to the benefit of the game. I'm not going to say they were yeah, outright yeah. bad, but they were not definitely not to the benefit. No one's going to praise the game because of the graphics for that game, which which is fair, which is fair. But just to me, I kind of think, what were the benefits of going with those models then as opposed to staying with hand-drawn? Um, and so I was just trying to think within the context of the second and third game, what did having 3D models bring to the game? Because with Virtue's Last Reward, you, you wouldn't get scenes like Fi doing her drop kick. Or, and I, and I just think it's usually just action-y scenes like that. Like, because even, even really, like, heartfelt scenes still f could have functioned from still-drawn image. Um, heck, one of the best endings is literally just a bunch of freeze frames, like, swiping over each other in overlays. Like, you could have just done that with hand-drawn. So, I don't know. I, it's kind of an interesting question of, what if Zero Escape had just stayed hand-drawn? Like I, I feel there would it would have been it probably could have worked in the series' favor, but I think it could have as well because again the the third game's character models they looked decent. It's just the animation of said models was cheap. Yeah, yeah, that that's what it is. Sorry, that's what I meant to say. Like the characters are they're cool, they're designed well. It's just yeah, the the animation and <laughs> <laughs> the the the, the cutscene the scenes the scenes mostly but like i said it's i don't mind it but i you know you have to still accept the fact that those are not good it's not good animation guys and you kind of wonder was it worth it could have just drawn it all and which i know is its own like amount and its own cost so maybe the models were just cheaper than going hand drawn which hey if that's the case fair i understand then but eh, i feel like what what would the series in, in a perfect universe what would what would Zero Escape have lost if it had just stayed hand drawn? Just stuck with it. I think it could have actually like worked out better. It probably could have. I would like, I would have liked to see what would have happened if they just stuck with that as well. But uh, now we must let the emotions run high. Ah, you got the the date ending. Oh no, wait, wrong, wrong type of video game. <laughs> yeah. When I first went through this section, it was before I'd gotten through the, the, the required ending, and I had no idea what was going on. I actually thought that Clover was just going to beat the shit out of me because I talked about her dead brother in gruesome detail. <laughs> but, I mean, surprise, surprise! Nope. At least she doesn't say, like, weird things, like, you remind me of my brother. It's like, whoa, buzzkill on the boat. Just the, mu the music just slows down and just stops, and the game the game ends there. <laughs> the, the, uh, the awkward conversation end. Ending. It's, it's the ending where uh, no one really dies, but everyone commits social homicide. <laughs> like, you don't all physically die, but no one really wants to talk to anyone else, so you might as well be dead. Junpei gets friend zoned. Oh, oh, bad, bad timeline. <laughs> I may have asked this before, but do you think it's possible that any of these games could come into some sort of animated form? I, I could see it. I could see, maybe not for a while. Yeah. Like I feel like give it time, and it'll just end up being like it's an anime based off this game that came out ten years, something like that. It would be weird. It, it wouldn't be a traditional release. I mean, I could see it being a traditional release, and if it did, I I I wouldn't foresee it really like going all out. It'd probably be like one of those lazier big studio releases. Um, uh, I mean, cause. <sighs> Because the thing is that there is that animated thing with Virtue's Last Reward, and that's one of the worst things in existence. Because I... Holy shit, the way that whole animation thing just contradicts 
the game. Oh yeah. <laughs> like to me, I feel like yes, it's it's quality art. I'm not gonna like oh, yeah. bash on anyone that worked on it, but just like the fact that that something like that exists when something in the game like makes it so wrong. It's like ah, yeah, it's, I know, I know, but it's like a wart. It's like I know I, it grew out of me, but fuck, get it off. I I see it as just them just fucking with us again and just reveling in doing so. And I I get I kind of admire that. I kind of admire. It. Yeah, yeah. It's it, they're basically pulling a ride in. It's like haha, we fucked you guys, which they did. They fucked me because you know most people were trying to like theory build off, based off that animation too so hey that's that's a pretty good middle finger but god uh, it, <laughs> my continuity yeah so now uh the hug ended because we mentioned that santa gave us that bookmark and oh. now clover is hinting at many 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 things that we're probably not going to get revealed because uh well i mean we will in the future but everything will be revealed in good time all timelines converge at some point along here i should point out though this is now we're going actually into detail about these ch ch experiments involving children Finally, because, you know, because for Clover, that's kind of rude to just, like, drop a huge, what does the word experiment mean to you? And just, like, leave us hanging there. So, <laughs> get get to explaining, girl. Oh, boy. I, I like how they had to first, you know, set up, build that whole, here's what an epiphany is. Really? I I didn't know that. I I think I just had an epiphany. What? Oh my god. <laughs> uh, this game's kind of weird on its whole knowledge scale. On the one hand, it's totally like, y'all know how glycerin, glycerin works, right? Alright, cool. Hey, but an epiphany? Let's, uh, let's slow it down there. Let's put the brakes on. Oh no, what was the name of the girl who... Oh, fuck you, Ace. God damn it! I still don't know whether or not I like this this kind of story mecha storytelling mechanic. Having someone interrupt a conversation just as it's about to get interesting. Because in one stroke, it makes for very good tension. But in another stroke, it means you still have to wait for the actual information to come. And it's just like, I don't know which, if the frustration weighs out the, 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 the adrenaline. It's it's really irritating in these very uh, one track graphic novel type games. Like if it was in a game where I could literally go back and start re talking to Clover, it's not that bad. You know, it can actually be pretty effective with a situation like that. But in the case of this, this is literally just up. Oh, we want here's a breadcrumb, and it's like they're already moving on to the next, laying down the next breadcrumb later on down the road. It's like I no. I'm hungry now. I've played enough of this game. I've seen the endings. Yes, I know that this might be someone's first ending too, but... And that's probably the reason why too, that we're only getting a awkward little pieces of information here and there. Uh, I guess we can also talk about this puzzle room as well. I think it's much better than the first one that we went into. Um, I like uh, the... I like the things that it has you do, essentially make... <laughs> Make a little mini Morse code map out of a mute out of a music box cylinder that you take out with like a bunch of screwdrivers. Um, I would I was I always thought this puzzle was it just felt too easy. But I mean, then again, uh, can you imagine doing this and not having this guide? Um, yeah. I mean, I guess I agree. I like this puzzle too. Just uh, I, I like the whole music box cylinder. I don't know. I'm a, I'm a fan of literally that one piece of music boxes. But I mean, it is kind of handy that you don't have to memorize the Morse code. But yeah, I guess that can make it feel very easy, especially since this is a last room puzzle. Um, but that that's definitely one issue with this game is that. 
because all the rooms are can be explored in a variety of orders. There's kind of weird difficulty curves that are created. And this is one where the puzzle just ends up being really easy for some reason. Very easy indeed. And now we actually get a little bit more detail as to, as to these this little book here that we didn't even spend like three minutes going into detail about in the original part because the game didn't. So why would we? <laughs> I mean, we were too busy talking about other things, most likely to even pass it by. Also, way to, way to go, Ace. I can't can't read human faces. Can't read hieroglyphs. What do we even keep you around for? Just just to murder us? Is that all you're good for? Yeah. Now I'm trying to find uh, what exactly that Morse code translates to. Because, I mean, of course, Morse code translates to letters. Um, it's like an ancient communication. In I, I mean, I wouldn't say it's ancient. Well, I mean, it's been used for a while. <laughs> Watch it be only 60 years. Okay, now I'm going to look up how old Morse code is. Yeah, yeah, that'd, that'd probably help you out. Look uh, at that, 1836. Six, six. <laughs> what does it even translate to? I guess I'm going to have to go back and do that but uh, i'll add it at the end of this part just tack it on just have you have you give you a reason to go through this entire part <laughs> so you gotta sit your butt down and watch this whole video if you want to get the secret code oh yeah uh it's uh alice again the keyword is alice we'll, we'll see you in 28 videos when that comes into play Yeah, this is. These are our two um, science stories inching ever closer to each other about funky water and funky mummies. Cells alive system. Okay, that is an actual thing. It's used by commercial freezers for. Oh, it's. This is something exclusive to Japan. Huh. What? Yeah, it's a. Look it up yourself. It's, it's a very stupid name, but apparently it's an, it is an actual thing. Uh, let's see. Claim to preserve food with greater freshness than ordinary freezing by using electromagnetic fields and mechanical vibrations to limit ice crystal formation that destroys food texture. Jesus, is there anything you can't do with an electromagnetic way? I mean, you could push a train, you could make a head explode, you can freeze someone? Okay. The opposite of making a head explode. Uh, uh, yeah. Just the, the versatility of an electromagnetic wave. Why isn't our... Why aren't our scientists researching this stuff? Get on that, scientists, whoever you <laughs> my, are. My Japanese video game got me very interested in science. I would like my government to spend more money on science. I want them to purchase five sciences a year, no less. The highest budgeting of science. Also, how to fix dead captains on our boats through science. I mean, we can, we can make the living, I mean, make the dead live again, right? We have that technology. Or we, we could have it through the elect electromagnetic through, field. Through an electromagnetic wave yes, and yes, through the yes. morphogenetic field. Yes, anything. Absolutely. Yeah, if, if, if it kills someone, then it probably brings someone back to life. Like, come on, that's pure logic. When in doubt, the game literally gives you its own explanation. Schrodinger's cat. What does that mean? Fuck if we know. Bye. <laughs> Still the worst line in the whole damn game. Makes my blood boil every time. Like, that doesn't answer the fucking question. Doesn't answer anything. Well, maybe it did, and maybe it didn't at the same time. You'll, you'll, you'll just have to... 
You'll just have to think about it a little bit harder. You'll just have to wait till the next game. Oh wait, it all got dropped. Oh yeah, of course. Now they're on the they're on the conversation of who killed that guy, as well. <laughs> this is just yeah. This is just the talky talking ending where we talk about how much we really don't like the rest of the people on our team. Yeah, just like I mean. We've been here for the past eight or so hours, but I'm pretty sure one of us killed someone. I I find it also really ironic that it's we're having these conversations of, gee, I wonder who killed all these people with Ace. Just, I mean, something about it's a little off. Yeah, a little bit, a little bit. It's like, gee, Willikers, why would why would someone murder all these people, Mr. Ace? Well, go gosh darn it, I have no idea. <laughs> Great, now I'm imagining everyone here having hillbilly hick accents. Yay! Out in the Nevada desert, this is the, <laughs> this is the hills have... I don't know. Or it could be on a ship in the, in the middle of the, the Atlantic Ocean. Who knows? Right, we're still on the boat. Yeah, and that's the end of this puzzle room as well, as well as a lot of information and emotional moments between us and Clover. A little bit of Ace as well. And on the next part, we are finally, finally getting to the true ending. Stay tuned.